Yeah, I retired just last year. Yeah, I went all the 16 years ago, I worked for a couple of years, went and left the money. It's too easy, too much for me. Where's 
on, it might get a little prolonged because this old, these old bones may take a little more time to get up and down steps. Before we commence, I'd like to express a special thanks to John Buckendorf and Laura Nichols for providing administrative support for these festivities, to Mike Boyer for, pride, for providing us with a program, and for um, <clears throat> Jennifer Miller for her video capturing of this event. <laughs> to Athletic Director Rich Mariani, I give the highest praise because he bears the workload of this production. Um, John Ostrich and I did this before him, and we know what a large amount of work it is, but we also know how gratifying it is. So that's really important to express thanks to Rich for what he's done on all of this. Also would like to express appreciation to the selection committee. Would those people who are on the selection committee please stand up? They're not all here, but generally They serve on a rotating basis when they commit to this or on a four-year rotation, and uh, then they get replaced with someone else who goes on a four-year rotation. I'd also like to have those who have been inducted into the Hall of Fame please stand. We'll have a few of those as well. I'd also like to remind you that the homecoming parade will begin at the Peak West East Lot starting at about 2.30 tomorrow after a 2.10 pep assembly in the main gym. Those inductees who can stay around for tomorrow night's football game, we'd also like to recognize you at halftime. So about four minutes before the half, please assemble at the north end of the west straightaway. That's the press box side the north end of the west straight away about four minutes before the end of the first half and we'll get you um, recognized at the halftime. So with that housekeeping chores out of the way, good evening to you all tonight. Welcome to the 24th annual Topeka West Sports Hall of Fame inductions. My name, as you have been told, is Joe Schrag and it is my distinct honor and extreme pleasure to be your moderator for tonight's activities. There's no place I would rather be, as Rich said, than to peak west on Hall of Fame night. And as usual, we have marvelous inductees to hear from and about. And I can't wait to get started. Our first inductee is in the category of special awards. This award is presented to an individual who has made significant contributions to the peak west sports, even though he or she was not an athlete or a coach at the peak west. Tonight, we honor Harold Wayne Sherman, who served at the Pink West community for 20 years between 2001 and 2021. Prior to that, he served 20 years in the United States Army as a non-commissioned officer in Germany, Bosnia, and Korea. You can read about Wayne and his accomplishments in the program, and I see no need to reiterate them. Instead, I'm going to read you a quotation from someone I don't know who probably found it on the internet, I wish I could claim it as my own, but I can't. It was in reference to a school custodian, and it fits Wayne perfectly. It says, the quiet hero of the school. They are always the first to arrive each day, clean up messes no one dares to touch, and befriend everyone that passes by. And if that doesn't capture Wayne, nothing does. So we would like to add the Peak West Sports Hall of Fame membership to his already received Distinguished Staff Award given by the District 501 in 2005. I would also say that Wayne will be inducted Sunday into the Graduate Hall of Fame as an Owen M. Henson Distinguished Staff Award. That being said, I give you our hero, Harold Wayne Sherman, to accept his certificate, his fellow Hall of Famer, Kit Yoko. Asked me to say a few things. 
He was here for 20 years. And as Joe said, to say Wayne was popular is an understatement. He was known throughout the district, the campus. The kids come back for Christmas to see him. When teachers and coaches who used to be here come back for a game, they make it a point to look him up. He was very popular. And he cared about the gym. He was here 20 years. He spent all his time up there, and that was his choice. He loved sports. He loved the coaches. He loved the players. And he got to see some pretty good teams in 20 years, too, up there. But um, he, he, West is very special to him, and he's very honored to receive this. He asked me to thank the administrators, the staff, and the custodians that he worked with in his 20 years here. They were special group of people, and he said he feels very privileged to have been part of Topeka West. Thank you.
Mike Stacy, Diana was co-captain on our first ever state championship team. Both Diana and Stacy played college tennis as well, finally splitting up with Stacy at Washburn and Diana at KU. Diana's reign of terror on Topeka West opponents began right after Lady, Lady Charger great Sherry Norris had graduated from here. In fact, had the state recognized team champions when Sherry was here, I'm sure we would have had at least two more team titles. But that's not how things went back then. And well, I'm sure I mentioned Sherry as a comparison to the girls a time or two during practice. But apparently it was so much so that one day Diana came up to me and she said, Corey, we love you and all. And we love Sherry too. She's not here anymore. So please stop talking about her. We're going to do great things too. You just wait. It was a humbling but necessary comment to me. It's also probably why I always wondered from time to time, am I coaching Diana or is she coaching me? Diana was also great about introducing our new younger players to the team each year as well as giving them advice on conflicts and appointments. She would always tell them to find out what their easiest classes were and to schedule all appointments during those classes because no one was to miss tennis practice. I could go on and on about her, but suffice it to say, she will always be family in the hearts of so many who knew and loved her. Diana passed away just a few days after the selection committee had made its decision on her induction. I told her that Rich Mariani wanted to talk to her, but I couldn't tell her why. My heart somehow tells me that even though they never connected, that she somehow knew. As I mentioned previously, I could just go on and on about her, but I will finish by saying, that I am honored to present Diana Gaither in the Topeka West Athletic Hall of Fame. And her brother, Rob, is here to accept on her behalf. Uh, 
She played in softball, and she really excelled at tennis and basketball. She played Capital City, and I really enjoyed going to watch her play because she always played with a competitive spirit that you just don't always see. Um, she always wanted to get better, and if she didn't win, she knew she had to go back to the drawing board and figure out what was going on. Um, the very last game of Capital City, she came up to me and she had this little wry smile on her face. And I said, what? What's going on? She goes, you know, that other really good tall blonde girl that's on that other team that we had so much trouble with? I said, yeah, I remember that. She goes, we're going to be on the same team next year at Topeka West High School. Then that was uh, Amy Bobby. And she and Amy had a friendship, you know, not just as friends, but as teammates that uh, you just don't see very often. <clears throat> She had great success in basketball. She loved playing defense, rebound. Uh, I saw she's on the steals. So that was the kind of player she was. She didn't have the scoring. She didn't have the things that you get written up in the paper about necessarily, but she did all the little things that a team needs to win. And on tennis, she excelled with her partner, Stacy Cook. I look back on those, and it was always like she got third one year, and then she got second the next year, and then she was the champion next year, and that happened. She always figured out what she needed to do to come back better and win. And uh, that was a motif throughout her entire life as it came to sports. She carried that on to college where she walked on the tennis team at KU and she made the team. Her sophomore year, she uh, was voted most improved player and continued to play uh, tennis at KU and be successful. After graduating KU, she continued to stay active in sports. Uh, she was at Waddell and Reed, and they have a Kansas City area um, sports challenge, and they had a basketball team. And I don't know if you remember back in the day, but uh, Kansas City had a, an organization known as the NCAA that would always put a team in these challenges. And so it was Diana, an HR manager, an accountant, and a fun analyst going up against five X Division I NCAA basketball. And of course, Diana says, if we're going to go out there, we're going to go out there to win. We're not just going to play, we're going to go out there and win. And though they didn't win, they still put together a pretty good team. But in her private life, she continued to compete as well. Uh, I remember she called me up one day and she said she'd been asked by some friends to play on a Olympic softball team co rec in Lawrence. And she wanted me to come watch her. And so I said, sure, that'd be great. And it was not quite halfway through the season. The team was a little lackluster, didn't really care as much about it. They were playing the team that was in first place. Um, they were down by 10 runs, and they needed to bat through the entire cycle and have a person score in order to win the game. They were down to their last out. And sure enough, they batted all the way around, and the last person hit it inside the park home run, and they won that game. And Diana goes, we're taking lead. And of course, that team went on to take lead that year. So that's why she always was. Um, again, anybody who knew Diana knew what kind of spirit she had, knew what kind of teammate she had, what kind of friend she was. Uh, she always brought that spirit and, and joy, and she was always someone that you looked forward to seeing if you weren't around. Um, again, I can't express how much it meant to her to have the opportunities that Topeka West gave her as far as playing on organized teams. Putting together such great programs was always very important to her. She always commented on how women seem to do a lot better and succeed more and be higher achievers if they have that kind of foundation in their life. Thank you, Topeka West High School. I appreciate this honor.
There's more to Misty and I than being mom, however. Um, she lives two houses from me. Uh, she moved in, I don't remember how many years ago. It's been about four. I can't see where Misty is right now. How many years has it been? Four or five. And I can guarantee you that Kinsley and Kyson have no idea what kind of track athlete their mom was. Um, I remember going through little plastic tubs of my parents and finding little articles every once in a while and being amazed that they had an athletic career. Um, if, if your kids go through your little tubs, they're gonna find three gold medals, state medals, they're gonna find a, a KU Relays championship medal. They're gonna find numerous other medals and they probably don't know anything about it. But that's, that's who you are and that's pretty awesome. Mr. Wilson, she's going in for track, not for tennis, okay? Just want you to know that, so stand back a little bit. Just hold on. Round and round. <laughs> Misty and I was on a championship four by one relay team, which basically gave Topeka West the, the title uh, Relay High back in the mid 90s. We won state. John was it four or five years? Is John still here? I think it was four years in a row. Four years in a row. And for those who know the 4x1 relay, um, that's an intricate machine that doesn't, that doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. And it did for us. Uh, she was on three of them. She and Gigi Johnson, Patsy Johnson, Sarah Brown, Medina Hazim, um, they were blazers. Uh, it was amazing. And they made me look really good. Really good. Um, well, I'd like to slightly answer. I'd like to thank you for that. I, you know, when you're an athlete of Misty's skill, it's good to have something to do with the offseason. Quit it. <laughs> State meet. I think it was 1995. We were going up against a team, Leavenworth, that Leavenworth had everybody back. Leavenworth, we, we hadn't lost to Leavenworth the year before, but they were good. And they were ready, they were ready to take us down. Uh, the gun went off, Misty takes the baton, she was always taking the second leg, and uh, the reason why I gave her the second leg, not because she was necessarily the fastest person, she always had that, but because when you receive and you present, you had to be on your game on both sides, on both sides. And Misty was always, always on her game. I don't think we've ever lost a baton on the second leg. Leavenworth was right on top of us, and we were neck and neck going into the, to the second handoff. And when Misty handed off to Patsy Johnson, it was like uh, a shotgun just happened. Patsy, Patsy just, it was like boom, just like that. And we look at the tape, the VCR tape, and, and we, we see that there was a perfect handoff for West, and Leavenworth missed it just once. And that was, it was game over. Leavenworth didn't have a chance after that. I'm about done. But, Mr. Wilson? I do think that her track accomplishments were tremendous. Oh, I do too. I, I would like to say that I will give you tennis was pretty good for her. I was at a tennis meet the other day, state championship. Uh, Pink West, by the way, got second in tennis last year at the boys' side. Kurt Davids was uh, voted the uh, coach of the year. I believe it was the Kansas coach of the year, if I remember right. And uh, so, tremendous. And I was at the state meet. I do the announcing for, for the tennis portion there. And, sorry, I know I'm running late. Um, and I kept hearing 
this on the course. I kept hearing 15 love, 30 love. I go, these people are really friendly with each other. What's going on here? And so Kirk Davis took me aside and he explained to me what that meant. And then I was really confused because I know Kirk Davis and Katie, his wife. I know Corey and Carla, great relationship. Sean Daniels and his, his wife, Brianna. I can't understand why love means nothing to tennis players. I don't get it. Okay, that was my best one. If you guys don't laugh, I'm good. <laughs> Mr. Wilson, you're up. Misty, Misty, never forget you. Never forget you. Uh, listen, I don't blame you at all for borrowing her uh, for, for, for your sport, for tennis. It uh, was, you know, you know, she needed that. It was good, it was good skill efforts for her. And uh, you talked about all these runner-up things that were really, really valuable in her experiences. And I, I, I just have to tell you that in tennis, all she did was win four city titles, four league titles, four regional championships. And then, of course, she was on the state Class 6A champion uh, for us and was instrumental in, in making that happen, irritating some young ladies from Kansas City, which was always one of our favorite hobbies, I think. Uh, so I think they were calling you cheaters because you were winning points, if I remember right. It was rather entertaining. Um, seriously, though, Misty is literally, and I, I know her track skills are part of that, too. She's literally the fastest kid I ever coached in tennis and quickest. She's faster and quicker than Sherry Norris, who played at Wimbledon and was, uh, she was faster and quicker than John Robinson, who I always considered was our fastest boy at, believe. You just couldn't hit the ball over her head. She was gonna get it. She, she was amazing. And she showed as much volatility as she's showing right now, <laughs> sitting there. You wouldn't know it, and you never knew it. I, I would, I'll, keep, I'll cut this short because I know we're both falling through the trap door here. And, uh, but one time I had Misty play number one singles for us at this tournament in Manhattan. And she was sick as sick could be. Didn't tell me, but she was sick. And when she got there, she was sick. She had temperature, all the things that you shouldn't let a player play for. But her mom and dad were there, so I figured I was clear. And uh, Misty went through that tournament barely losing any games. I mean, she just mowed those kids down, and I mean, she was done with her matches by noon. And her rationale was, I'm sick, faster I play, sooner I get to rest. And, uh, but again, she, she was that way. She was just uh, an incredibly uh, talented and, and uh, very humble young lady, which I think had a lot to do with all the skill sets. The one thing that I would say that piggybacks onto what Tracy was talking about is that Misty was our stabilizer. She, in our group of six girls, Misty was the stabilizer. She was quiet, but she got her point across when she needed to, but she was our stabilizer. And you need, if you're going to be successful, you've got to have some stability somewhere. And uh, she was she was it. And, and, and not just not just talented, but extremely controlled. I'll say this. I think Misty Nye is the reason why both Topeka West Track and Topeka West Tennis are two of the best programs around. They uh, benefited immensely from Misty Nye. And lastly, on a personal note, Misty knows what I'm talking about here. I want to thank you again from the bottom of my heart for all you did for my family when my dad was nearing the end of his career. Truly amazing young woman. I'd put her in all of for that long, but obviously she is well deserved. So, do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? Mm -hmm.
my honor to present Ms. Misty Nye Kerr. Did I say that last name right? Kerr? Kerr. To the Topeka West Athletic Hall. Just off social media, 
And there's one that I came across and I thought, you know, it's a simple quote, but I feel like it's, it's so true. Everyone is looking for the right combination of good. I realize some may never get it. So if you get something good in your sports journey, appreciate it and say thank you. So again, thank you for this recognition. Thank you to the committee. And I'm truly and proud to be part of the Charter Bay.
last individual inductee is two sport athlete Jackie Wolf Giroux. Mark my French. She will be introduced by her husband, Eric. Speaking with him, 
she came to find that he had just recently lost his mother and was understandably pretty torn up about it. For those of you who don't know, Jackie and her brother JP, he's here, and their dad Jim, lost their mother and wife Debbie when Jackie was a junior here at Speak High. Uh, to the west, I was speaking, I'm sorry. Free, free <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and that was on February 9th. On February 10th, Jackie went out and started for the Chargers uh, in a basketball game. This, I believe, I know, is what makes Jackie fundamentally different than maybe any other person I've ever met. Jackie set all these records, scored all these goals, crushed all her schoolwork, was such a strong leader on and off the field, as they say. All the usual amazing sports achievement stuff, and Jackie did all of that easy, but she became better during the most trying time of her life. Truly Alright, back to the coffee shop. After Jackie connects with this gentleman, she decides to go buy the guy a gift, something to remind him of his mother. Some weeks later, Jackie's at a restaurant the woman comes up, are you Jackie? Jackie says, yes, question mark. The woman goes on to tell her, you're an angel in our home. Come to find this woman at, uh, is the coffee shop guy's wife. And the woman then reveals that the little gift that Jackie got him is featured in their home and routinely incorporated in a prayer into their ongoing connection with their past loved one. So I guess what you uh, should know about Jackie that you can't read in your program is that Jackie get, Jackie's really good at making people cry, whether it be her opponents that she decimates on the field or at the bowling alley, uh, people she works with when she helps them elevate their worth, or strangers that she makes meaningful and genuine connections with. You can tally up all the on paper accolades, sure, she's a shoe in for the Hall of Fame, but learn more about who Jackie is and how she has accomplished so much despite the gravity of her personal experiences, and you'll know that there is no better ambassador to this school, to its athletic program, or to this community. Jackie, congratulations. You are truly born. Uh, 
David's times two. Uh, Goring, Sites, Goheen, Weir, Plunkett, uh, some. Um, coach Lewis, basketball. Um, you were a basketball coach, and uh, you always had an unlimited amount of time to um, talk and uh, go through things. I appreciate that. Uh, Mr. Wilson, um, and <clears throat> Mrs. Boer. Uh, Boer, uh, are you still here? I don't know if she's still in here. Damn, she was a good teacher. Um, I, I had her for history class, and I, I really learned something in there. I really appreciated that. I'm making sure I'm not forgetting anybody. Uh, yeah, Mariani, um, for inviting me into your home and your, your sons um, walking me down the aisle for homecoming. That was really special. And coaching my brother, golf. Uh, um, I appreciate all of you guys so much, so thank you. Um, my classmates who are here, um, Brian, Marcus, Katie, Allie, Elizabeth, I love you guys. Um, your peers are really important during that time, and uh, ooh, sorry, so emotional. Um, but you guys, always, you're here to uh, celebrate my successes, but you're, you were there during the hard times too. I appreciate that. Um, Elizabeth and uh, Katie and Sarah, um, you three uh, have been some of my best friends forever. And uh, over 20 years, it makes me feel old, you know, I'm 33, but we've been friends for 22 years. Um, and you guys have shown up for me over and over again. And uh, your parents as well uh, kind of taking me in. Um, Ann and Bob Fincham and Deb and Larry Peters and uh, Colleen and Joel Sherwood. All help raise me, and I appreciate that. Um, I love you guys. Um, Elise, you too. Another, another speaker high church in the house. I love you too. Um, back here. Um, now my husband uh, couldn't ask for a better teammate. Man, uh, I've never met somebody uh, so genuinely pumped up for other people and their successes. You are uh, such a cheerleader, and I'm so grateful to be uh, married to you. Um, you're the smartest person I've ever met, and uh, I feel privileged to have you in my life every day. I love you so much. Uh, my stepson, Jackson, I've uh, been around since he was uh, two or three years old. Um, continues to be one of my biggest teachers in life. Uh, we were meant to be in each other's lives. Uh, and uh, he's one of the coolest people I've ever met, uh, still to this day. Uh, my daughter Mila, who's three down there next to my husband. Um, her foot skills are looking promising. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not pushing anything, but the kid has something. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Um, uh, my other teammates, uh, my, my number one teammates is day one, my brother, JP, uh, who went from Denver. Uh, I love you so much, and um, you, uh, those of you who know JP know how special he is, and uh, he's, uh, he's calm, and he's consistent, he's kind, he's inclusive, he's protective, he's successful, he's all the things uh, that you need in a big brother. He was a senior when I was a freshman at, here at Topeka West, and uh, always made sure I had what I needed, and that uh, people were treating me right, and I love you for that. And uh, we've been through a lot together, and um, you've always just been so great. I appreciate that. Even even so, way back since childhood, he never gave me a hard time. He always included me, and uh, um, you know I had to put up with you know being victim of some wrestling moves, and you know uh, <laughs> connecting to what a brother said earlier tonight. Uh, my brother and I uh, did a lot of sports together, and I have a fun memory of um, in the summers we would take like a a, a broomstick. We placed it over the top of my parents' bed when they were at work, and we would sprint down the hallway and practice our high jump onto their bed with the broomstick. And uh, I just have so many memories like that. So uh, thank you. He's also a phenomenal athlete and uh, made me better in every way and everything I ever played. So thank you, JP. Uh, and uh, he ended up marrying one of my basketball teammates here at West, uh, Shawnee, who I love so much. Um, 
such a great teammate um, in life and sister and um, beautiful mother to my nieces. And I uh, was so excited to hear that he was dating you and he did. And uh, they live in Denver now and um, are just doing so great. And um, Shawnee was also a phenomenal athlete, um, not only basketball, but track and uh, a West Sider. So um, I love seeing the dance skills come out in her girls. Uh, it's my favorite thing, and my nieces. Um, Oh, I love you guys so much. And then uh, uh, my extended family who's here, um, all, all to be West Chargers. Um, my mom and her six siblings all went through here and uh, they grew up just catty corner off of Fairline Road. Um, I love you guys, thank you for being here. And you guys are that uh, silent safety net that I have and I've always had. Um, I love you all and I know that uh, I could call on literally any of you at any time for anything, and you would drop whatever you were doing to uh, come help me or have my back. So I love you guys. And uh, last thing, my parents, they both passed away. My mom when I was in high school, as my husband mentioned, and then my dad just this last December. Um, so I lost them both young, but uh, they obviously sacrificed a lot. Um, my dad was a phenomenal athlete, phenomenal at everything, and if Topeka West had baseball in the 70s, I have no doubt that he'd be in the Hall of Fame here. Um, so uh, I get a lot of that from him. And uh, one of my uh, memories of my parents' sacrifice through club soccer, especially, I mean, we were, we were in another state every weekend, every single weekend, and my dad was, you know, working full time and also driving me an hour and a half just to go to practice to and from during the weekdays. I mean, um, he'd pull me from school sometimes even, you know, 30 minutes early so we could make it on time. Um, and uh, uh, just the time, the financial side, um, but show my dad's dedication to my passion. Uh, I remember being in, bas in basketball games here at Topeka West. We play on Friday night. Um, you know, the game, the women's game was always a little bit earlier. I'd be done at eight or so. And I would run to the locker room, I'd get my stuff. Um, Coach Lewis would say his words and then I'd run out to the parking lot, hop in the car, my soccer stuff would be in the car, and my dad would drive through the night to get to Memphis for a 7.30 a.m. club soccer game. I would just sleep in the car overnight, wake up, and, uh, you know, time to get up and play, and I'd, I'd play with my club team. Um, I don't have anyone representing here tonight, but my, my, co my club coach, Richard, um, the crazy British guy, uh, just knew how to push me and make me better, and he was awesome. We won several state titles. Um, I think five, and um, and uh, we were 14th in the nation, and I owe a lot to those girls on that team um, that really exuded excellence and, and made me better in a lot of ways. Um, but I love my parents for that sacrifice and being able to put me in that environment. Um, I love them so much for that, and uh, tonight's definitely for them. Um, I'm so proud to be able to carry on a legacy that represents them and uh, the school that they went to as well. So thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Did you see the way Eric bounded up those steps? That was me 50 years ago. When considering uh, inductees to the Hall of Fame, one of the big considerations is not only athletic ability and athletic uh, success, but also character. And in that category, they didn't have to look very far with Jackie to, to put a check in that box. The team to be inducted tonight is the 1996 girls swimming and diving squad, which placed first in city, second in league, and third in state. Here to introduce them is Rod Garman. He not only had the Topeka West swimming and diving at a high level at Topeka West, but he recently won a state championship in boys swimming and diving at Seaman High School. <laughs> Even beyond 
Topeka West. Uh, it's, been, it's just been very inspiring to listen to your stories. Um, but I'm here tonight to talk about a very special team here at Topeka West High School back in 1996. And um, before I start talking about, about the athletes, I have to give some thank yous to some uh, adults who took a chance on me to even be able to be involved with this wonderful group of ladies. Um, I gotta give a shout out to Hall of Famer here at Topeka West, Mr. Ed Port, who, uh, who made it possible. <laughs> big chance on, he, he, gosh, you know, I was a young guy, I was coaching a summer team here, and was involved with TSA, and, and he says, hey, I'd love for you to come help me coach at Topeka West, and uh, coach some fine young, young ladies there, and, and of course I knew many of them through my interactions with them in summer league and, and club, and, um, and I was so excited about that opportunity, and, and thank you to Mr. Schrag for agreeing to let this young person come in and work with Ed and, and work with all these fine young ladies. It was, it was an amazing opportunity. At the time, you know, you take for granted. I mean, we were all young. These, these ladies were young. I was young. I mean, you, you don't really realize what you're accomplishing at that time, right? I mean, yeah, we, we were good. We were having success. But now that you look back at it, wow. I mean, it was, it was an incredible team. Some other adults I want to shout out to are all these lovely parents out here are here supporting once again their daughters and their accomplishments because the support the family feel to that team uh, was just amazing and whether it was the great team dinners they were providing or uh, all the different things they did locker signs whatever it may be the send-offs being at the beach cheering as loud as they could um, the parents you did an awesome job with all of your your daughters out here um, just amazing um, so, you can see in the program quite, quite the accomplishments as a team. Uh, but some other things I want to educate you just a little bit about, about swimming and diving. Because I'm looking through here at the Hall of Fame inductees, and this is the first ever swimming and diving team inducted into the Topeka West Hall of Fame. And quite frankly, might be the only one uh, for years to come. Uh, there's been some mighty fine individuals, um, Emily Dykus, what an incredible swimmer. Um, just recently, Caitlin Jeffries, holy cow, won every state event she ever swam. Um, so some great individuals, some great individual men as well and things, but as a team, I don't, I don't know that there's ever been. I don't know when there will be a team that'll top this team and their accomplishments. Okay, so back then, back then, regular season meets, there were a lot of duels. I mean, we might have a try here and there, there was duels. Now, holy cow, you're out, you're out at swim meets during the regular season. They're huge invitationals all the time. Um, but, you know, we were taking on big schools. At that time, in, in 1996, there was one state championship meet. All schools competed together and against one another, from the largest 6A down to the smallest, whoever was involved. Um, and so we were competing against a lot of 6A schools throughout the regular season. Um, we knew we had a special team um, and that, you know, we were competing well in those duels and I loved the strategy of putting this team lineup together and seeing, okay, how are we going to match up with this particular team and how can we win this meet, how can we shift around. Um, so fun. We had so many individuals on this team that could swim so many different events. Um, and I could just use them as puzzle pieces and place them. And so the whole team aspect of it was so different for me coming from the club world. Um, it was so exciting. Um, we also had, a, had an integral part on this team uh, with the divers. And uh, Coach Jim Hanley um, was, our, was our diving coach. He was incredible. His son Jeff is here. He was also a fine coach in his own right. Um, but we had a couple incredible divers on this team, and in swimming and diving, there's 12 events, 11 of which are swimming, and then there's diving. It's very important to have those divers as well, because uh, if you're not getting any points in that event, that's going to be quite detrimental to your overall team score. So I, I can't say enough about uh, Coach Hanley as well and, and all that he did. And um, 
But speaking, going back to the meats, as I said, everyone competed against one another back in those days, and there weren't separate classifications at meets or at state. City was huge. It was kind of, to me, more of a focus for us to win that city meet, more so than even going on and winning Centennial League or, or winning a state, because we had a rival here in town called Topeka Wash from Rule, along with Topeka Hay. Because back in that day, they were a cooperative team. And I don't know why, Mr. Schrag, they were allowed to swim together at city, but they were. And so it truly was a, a David versus Goliath type scenario. I mean, our goal was to beat them and to get them at city. And quite, quite a challenge when you throw those two schools together and what they had in, in, in athletes. Um, so that was a huge strategy. And the girls worked side by side with me on, okay, I think if we swim so-and-so here, if we maybe switch, they're going to expect us to swim here, so let's swim over here. And just the whole mindset of working together as a team and, and lining that up. Um, so winning that city meet that year was just huge. And what a high it put us on then going on into the league that year. Um, I mean, we swept the relays at City. We won all three relays, which was huge, because those are double points in swimming. Um, and then going on to Centennial League, we, or was it Centennial League back then? I-70 League. Uh, uh, winning all three relays there, unbelievable. Not only against Topeka, Washburn, Rule Hay, but against Manhattan, which was a huge power jug juggernaut swim team back in that day. Um, so, just the accomplishments of this team and what they did. Well, when we go to state, and I, I, I personally didn't have any expectations. I was just excited to see, you know, how we're going to do, where, you know, how are we going to place? Um, and uh, to start off very first event, and to set the state meet record in that 200 medley relay um, at that time. Uh, Wow, you know, that opened our eyes. I think we were like, we're here to play. We can compete with Blue Valley Northwest and Shawnee Mission East and Lawrence High and Manhattan and these lot la la larger schools. Um, and so I think that preliminary day, going into those prelims and, and starting off so great, um, really got us, got us pumped up and got us going. And, and you have to think about on this team, we only had one senior. So, on the mistake of that picture, there's only one swimmer that's not on there, right? I mean, that was Lindsay De La Torre, and she was a great captain and a great senior leader at that time. But, um, but we were young uh, at state. And um, so we had, along with the relays, the three relays, we had two divers qualified that year for state, which was huge. And we had 10 individual swims, 10 individual swims, and out of those 10, Nine of them came back for finals the second day. All three of our relays, of course, came back and placed top six. Uh, we were first, of course, in that medley relay, um, setting the state record. We ended up third in the 400 free relay, and we were fifth. Can you believe I can remember this all the top of my head? This is back in 1996. Anyway, we were fifth. I mean, it's just so memorable. I can see it to this day. I mean, it's just like it was yesterday. But uh, we were fifth in that 200 free relay. And I got to give a shout out to Jennifer, Jennifer Clark at that time. Because she took an individual event to swim three relays at that particular state meet because we knew we needed her uh, to help us. Because what did I say before? I'm educating you here. Relays were double points, and they still are, which is very different from track and field and other sports. Um, it really emphasizes the team aspect. Um, so. Uh, and then moving on into finals and having nine individual swims come back as well. Uh, uh, several swimmers, I'm going to name them off, Katie Bray, Trisha Fairchild, Kelly Dudley, Tiffany Dudley, were all swimming two individual events along with two relays. So they were, you know, that's a lot in a, in a single meet. Um, and uh, they all just swim incredibly. In fact, you got to give a shout out because Kelly's already a Hall of Famer back there individually. Um, but uh, we just had some amazing, amazing talent. Uh, but the true aspect of this team is the word team. Because it was such an incredible group of girls supporting one another. Um, there's a lot going on that you know. 
girls, high school. Someone mentioned it up here earlier. God bless the coach who put up with us or whatever, right? I mean, there was a lot of drama. And in fact, you know, it was my first experience. It was my second year coaching them, but it was my first experience to coach a girls team. And I gotta tell this, this story, just briefly. I pulled, I pulled aside after our first practice by one of the swimmers who knew me well from my coach during the summer as well. And she said, Rob, well, we need to talk. We need to talk after practice. Uh, I'm going to give her her name. So it was Trisha Fairchild back there. And she says, Coach, you can't coach us like guys. Uh, and, and, and she set me straight right off the bat uh, and, and recommended a book even to me to read. <laughs> uh, and uh, really set me on a course for becoming a much, much better coach. Um, and so uh, I, I had to throw that in because, you know, a lot of the success that this team accomplished was due to their camaraderie, their love and support of one another, their pushing each other day in, day out. And unless you've ever swam competitively, I don't think you realize how much work it is. Um, in fact, you know, some of their boyfriends at the time would say, oh, you're just a swimmer, you're not an athlete, da, da, da. And I remember we invite, we would invite them, well, just come some and practice with us. Let's see how you do, you know, and how you survive. But it's a grueling sport, and the dedication that they showed and the support for one another uh, was just amazing. Um, I have to talk about the longevity of this team to also show the, the greatness involved, because um, if you just go within those four years that some of these members, some of these athletes were part of these teams, they were ninth at state in 94, sixth in state in 95, took that incredible third place finish in, in 96, and then came back in 97 and took fifth overall as a team, uh, which shows you just, I mean, they continue to be successful every year at, uh, at the highest level. So, once again, I, I'm so delighted and so proud to be able to introduce to you the team inductees into the Topeka West Hall of Fame this year, the 96 swimming and diving team. Ladies, come on up if you're here. Come on up.
were talking about that. And we knew we did good in some relays, but we still have the school record in all of three of the relays. I forgot to mention that. At the time, we had nine of the 12 <laughs> records uh, on the chart, and there are still five remaining, including <laughs> all the three relays and the two diving. <laughs>
took away from this team is that we are a team and we are a family. I mean, we have some amazing <laughs> swimmers standing over there and amazing athletes, and I think we just all went into everything together, where it, whether it was someone crying on the first day of practice and we were gonna do something about it, <laughs> and we all felt committed to that, um, or whether it was really feeling like we wanted to beat um, Hayden Washburn Rule at City, which we did. Um, we just all did it together. I think that was um, the nicest honor about this is we all still feel like, what, <laughs> what did we do that was so special? Um, but looking back at some of these um, awards and places is really pretty remarkable now, um, many, many years later. So thank you to everyone. Dr. Shacker, you talked about the track team um, running in circles and in swimming. All we do is just, you know, go back and forth. So instead of um, repeating myself, I'll leave it at that. But thank you again for um, bringing us all back together. I think first and foremost, this was really such a great honor for all of us as a team. Thank you for your attendance. Good night and travel safely. Thank you. 